So for all of you guys out there who think I should be making CSGO News episodes where I talk a bit slower and of course don't get too excited, this is going to be that episode. I'm really tired this Sunday morning, but I hope you guys are all had a great weekend so far. And of course, we did have some big, big things happening in the news this past few days, as well as the past the day, especially with the Face It Miners finally finishing up. So hope you guys all enjoy. And let's hop into our first story, though, and a bit of controversy out there all around Doc. Now, I'm sure if you guys are not new to the channel, you know all about Doc's background. I'll link some videos down below for all of you about his suspicious background. And at this point, it's getting pretty suspicious. I think you guys realize my standpoint of the situation a while ago. I was on his side primarily uh, because of the whole situation he was uh, supposedly in with his parents at home until until he turns 18 in September and he moves out. And apparently that situation has escalated. Uh, he actually did delete this tweet later on, but of course we did get screenshots of his original tweet, and that was him showing a password restriction on his PC. Now, I'm not sure if he still has that restriction as of right now. I did not reach out to him, although I will after this video, uh, to talk more about that. And allegedly what the rumor was is his parents, specifically I think it was his dad, actually put a password restriction on his computer. And if you guys know his background, it's because his, his parents are so anti-gaming, so against what he's doing. Um, and so that is apparently the reason as to why he did tweet that out. Uh, as to why he did delete it though, I think people were accusing him of trying to do it for, of course, uh, attention, that kind of thing. And I'll give this guy one source of credit. And if this is this whole story, this whole uh, thing is actually ended up being true, it's a pretty crazy story at this point. You know, I was okay with it up until now, and now it seems a bit extreme. But if this guy does one thing correct, he knows how to stir up some drama. And I cannot wait for the next return of the numbers, return by the numbers with Thorne and uh, Richard Lewis. They're probably going to tear this apart. They are definitely two heavy anti doc people out there who think he is faking it. And there's definitely uh, suspicious clips out there, clips where it may not even be his voice talking, where people think the voice and the audio isn't synced up correctly. There are so many theories out there as to who this guy is. And this just adds another tier to the story. Is he actually still password restricted out of his PC? Was it for attention? I think we'll find out soon. But at this point, let's get into some other news. And I do need to thank my friend Adam, who actually sent me a document. I will link that document down below for all of you guys who are curious. Uh, of course, over the past two days, we had the largest back band waves we have pretty much ever seen in CSGO. One of them being on Thursday. That was the single largest back band wave ever to hit CSGO with nearly 65,000. I think it was just over 60,000 officially, although some sources out there say it was actually 66,000 throughout the entire day. Either way, over 60,000 back bands in one single day does mark it to be the biggest back band in CSGO history. And on top of that, no one really noticed the day before as well. We also had nearly 30,000. So within the span of two days, we saw almost 100,000 accounts banned. And again, I'll kind of reiterate my point that I made in the last episode. Uh, I really think it's cool that Vacnet is doing such a great job, but it's also very sad to step back and actually see how many accounts and how many people out there only play CSGO to cheat. It makes you really wonder of the core CSGO fan base, how much, I mean, I take away the core fan base and how many people out there either just cheat or we're using CSGO for gambling. And it seems to be pretty extreme numbers, but also on screen for all of you guys, including the document is several cheats out there that were actually accused or taken down for some time. I'm not really sure if all of them are actually back up right now. One of them was Fanta, a pretty well-known private cheat out there in terms of uh, how expensive it was. Not too many users, but I think it was actually a $400 private cheat as well as some high-level accounts there with actually banned. I think the highest inventory we've seen so far is only $500 to $1,000, but still some pretty big bans out there. You would think of 100,000 back bans, you'd see some uh, higher inventories, uh, skin inventories out there. But of course, if you are cheating, you're probably not going to be having too many expensive skins on your accounts. Nonetheless, though, back not doing a great job, almost 100,000 accounts a band in just a two day span. And this isn't really CSGO news, although it kind of is. We actually had Amelia Holt, the girlfriend of Device. I'm sure you guys are well aware of their, or their coupleship. Their relationship has been going on for quite some time. And she actually had this picture on Snapchat over the weekend and it confused a lot of her fans out there. They thought, of course, given that being her ring finger and apparently her left hand, people thought she was going to be married or she was going to get engaged to Device. And she had to clarify, no guys, she wore the ring on the wrong finger, shouldn't have done that. And yes, Device and her will not be getting married, which my only response to is um, Amelia Next story. And before we get into the biggest stories about our final major teams out there, we have solidified as of today, all of our teams going to the major qualifier. And I am so excited. A lot of stories coming out of that, which we'll talk about in a bit here. We have some big news coming for any Imperial fans or the Imperial fans out there. The rising team of June, they had some successful times there with the team. And apparently as of last week, they did announce that Esperanto, by far and away, probably their best player was actually going to be leaving the team. And according to the team, it was because of a conflict with their IGL crystal. Now, just a few days later, guys, we have some new information from Nell and other sources 
sources out there that apparently the Imperial is making some huge changes and it will actually involve Esperanto after just a week of being away and announcing he was going to be leaving the team because of conflict with the IGL and the big question was like what's more important a really star player like Esperanto or a very solid IGL for the team like Crystal and it seems the team has now rebounded their decision and they will be making changes apparently for Crystal and Tensky with Esperanto coming back to the roster they still have Nuki and Nexa and apparently two new players guys a very weird combination in terms of at least age base we actually have Loba Loba really known for his FPL time FPL stats not really any experience in CSGO professional teams at all I'm not trying to bash the guy it seems like a very odd pickup he will replace Crystal in his role of IGL and on top of that though a very strong pickup here another very well-known FPL member out there that is actually frozen the youngest member to actually ever join FPL at the age of 14 or 15 he is now 16 years old so why I say age base Loba is actually 28 years old and then we have frozen 16 years old but apparently they'll be joining the team in place of Tensky and Crystal so it's pretty crazy to see this team rebound and in the time of a week span they've all this all of a sudden decided Esperanto you're too good to give away come on back we're gonna actually have Loba and of course frozen join and Tensky and Crystal are apparently out of that roster we'll see how it works out for these guys in the future but definitely a really weird situation because the coach and the players had seemingly all agreed to kick him off the team but now he's back. And very lastly, before we get into the final major news, I do apologize for keeping that last for all of you, but I just wanted to have a community question out there, and that was about Cloud9's questionable sponsor. I don't really have a standpoint on this. I, I'm going to make one, but I, I don't want to offend anyone out there. One of their latest sponsors, who actually USA Army Recruiting Sponsor, uh, you guys have seen the tweets out there, and almost immediately, within an hour of them actually posting this, there was a Reddit post. There were other forum posts out there. There was replies directly to the tweet about people being offended by this, this new sponsor of theirs. Now, they are recruiting people for the U.S. Army through their sponsors, so I can understand maybe why European or other fans out there, other nation, uh, national fans out there might see this as a bit of a weird sponsor, but I really don't see the issue here. So please leave a comment down below. I'm, I'm being honest here. I do not see why this would be offensive to anyone. So I'm really curious for all of you guys who actually were offended by this, please explain it to me. Uh, it's kind of my community question out there as Cloud9 has now announced one of their newest sponsors and it did receive quite a bit of backlash. And that is it. To close out today's episode of CSGO News, we now have finalized all of our major teams. So of course we have our legendary teams, our challenger teams now are eight teams who have gone through the minor i do want to ask you guys a question as well what do you guys think was the biggest upset so far in terms of the minor system my own my own personal one of course me being a north american fan i have to say it i think team nrg not going through is a pretty big surprise i think in my own opinion a lot of opinions out there they were probably your number one or number two team at least in that minor system so seeing them not go through was kind of a hard thing to see but again we got two great teams complexity and rogue in their place and i cannot wait to see heat go play that'll probably be the team that i really cheer for throughout the major qualifier for me personally will be team rogue and alongside that, a lot of stories out there. Of course, the European minor is always a hailstorm of teams out there that are pretty solid looking compared to other minor teams. And this year was actually Optic Gaming alongside NIP who did squeeze through. So I actually promised you guys if NIP or 3D Max made it through the major qualifier, I would do a double knife giveaway. That'll be linked down below for all of you guys who do want to participate. If it's not up right now, it will be up very soon on my Twitter. So look out for that. But also some kind of some sad stories out there as we did here now officially. Yes, King would not go through. Obviously, Optic and, and NIP went through in their place. Kingwin not going through with Taz means that for the first time ever in CSGO history, Taz has missed a major. Yes, he went to 12 straight majors, and this is the first one in his career he has ever missed, which is just an insane stat to see. There's not many pros out there who had those kind of stats, so kind of a sad story to see. But what do you guys think? Who's going to flop at the major? Who has a great chance to win? Uh, we're going to find out sometime very soon in September for the face of major. As always, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. I will see you guys all sometime very soon with more, and uh, I'll see you all then. Goodbye.